Hi guys, happy new year. I am finally back in the office. I took a, a two week vacation during the holidays and I'm finally back in the office and I thought it would be a really good time to um, get a video out and um, kind of check in with you guys and see how things have been going and see what you wanted to um, hear me uh, talk about over the next um, couple of months. I've got some big plans for the new year and a lot of video ideas, but I would love to hear what you guys want to um, uh, hear about as well. Uh, so today I am going to talk about um, something that has to do with patience and waiting and the unknown um, and the un uh, the discomfort that comes with um, a big life change. So I um, have been asked a lot about what to do when we have a big life event happening or change happening that we can't necessarily control or um, or we're in a waiting period. It can be really, really hard when we've, you know, maybe taken a test um, or we're waiting for a job um, interview or someone has um, some bad news for us and they said, but we can talk about it later or um, even good news, it doesn't have to be bad. And, and so when we're in this kind of in limbo, when we know that something's gonna change, whether it's good or bad, but we can't know the answer yet, um, what do we do about it? And it can be really uncomfortable, it can be scary, it can be stressful. Um, but it can also be really rewarding and a really good place for us to grow and work on mindfulness and patience um, and kindness to ourselves. And so today I kind of broke it up into five different steps or five different things that I think can be really, really helpful when we're in this in-between period when transitioning to something new. Um, so the first one that I like to do when I'm waiting to hear on something is, and this might be a little bit um, uh, contradictory to what others might say, but because um, we really don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole of worst case scenario, but I think if we also play out in our mind what the worst case scenario is, we will learn that we can survive it. So um, say we are applying for our dream job and we want this job more than anything in the world. Um, exploring what would happen if we didn't get the job. Are we still in a job currently that's stable enough and can pay our bills? Can we try for another job? Um, have we lost our job and we and we um, don't have a stable job and, and we do really need this job? Well, then maybe we could um, send out five other applications in case we don't get this job. And so uh, what, what I tend to do is, you know, play out worst case scenario and then remind myself that I will survive that, that nothing is so bad um, that I can't survive it. And the reason it isn't so bad that I can't survive it is because, and this is step one, is making sure that you have backup plans. So when you're worried about something and you have a lot of stock in something and you're, you're waiting to hear if, um, if you passed or if you got the job or um, whatever it is, if you got the house, that you have a backup plan. And that doesn't have to be a concrete backup plan, but you also have an emotional backup plan, knowing in your heart that if you fail or if you don't get it, that you have processed it and that you know you'll be okay. Um, I don't want you to go too far down the rabbit hole. I don't want you to spend a lot of time thinking about the worst case scenario, but um, making sure you've played it out to know that you will survive it if you don't. Um, get the the thing that you're looking for. Um, the second is especially focused on when you're in this in-between period, when you're in limbo. So um, for instance, I took my national exam um, a couple months ago and we don't get the results back for a month. And so there was a lot of in-between waiting and um, sometimes I would wake up and get this knot in my stomach. Um, wondering, but there was nothing I could do about it because I wasn't going to get the results. And so um, how do I live every single day slightly worried, slightly anxious, slightly, slightly excited, um, but still be able to stay in the moment? So uh, what I do then is, um, you know, coping skills. So making sure that I'm eating well, even when I'm anxious, that I'm getting enough sleep, getting enough exercise, um, that I'm working on my self-care and um, 
that I'm working on really being mindful. Sometimes I had to do deep breathing. Sometimes I had to just stay focused in the moment and remind myself that there's nothing I could do in that moment to change how I did on the test or even knowing what the results were. And I really had to stay focused. It takes practice and it takes skill to recenter and focus yourself, um, but you have to just keep coming back to it. And so, um, how we do that or one of the ways that I like to do that and so this is tip three is the worry hour so it's really easy for us to have thoughts infiltrate our minds um, and feel like we don't have any control but sometimes it happens when we're not in an ideal spot like we're at work or we're driving or we're in a meeting or we're having dinner with family and we can't explore these thoughts that are super uncomfortable and so what I will often suggest for clients is something called a worry hour um, and so if I'm in the middle of a session and I get a worry like, oh, I wonder how I did on my test. And then I start thinking about it while I'm with a client. I need to be focusing on my work. I need to be focusing on my clients. So I tell myself, okay, tonight at seven, I will explore all the things I'm worried about and try and figure out what I can solve. Um, and so by com kind of compartmentalizing, I am putting these thoughts in a different part of my mind and going to pull back them, um, pull back to them later. The really helpful thing about this is usually if we don't act impulsively on our thoughts in the moment, they kind of go away. So by the time I get to seven o'clock at night, I'm not too worried about it anyway. And so I don't even have to have the worry hour. Um, but say I do and I'm still really worried, then um, I can kind of think about uh, what I'm worried about, what are things I can control, what are things I cannot control. Um, in that worry hour is probably where I would then think about worst case scenario and then make sure I have plans and backup plans if I um, don't pass the test or again if you um, didn't get the job or um, or even um, someone's sick in the family that's another good one um, well not good one but that's another one in terms of um, when we don't really know what's gonna happen are they okay what do we do about it um, so then the, the fourth thing, and I kind of touched on this earlier, is self-care and self-love. So a lot of the times when we are waiting to hear um, about something and then we, or we find out we didn't get it, um, it can be really, really hard on our ego, on our self-esteem. And so making sure that leading up to finding out what's going on in that limbo period, that you're really working on self-love, self-care, um, self-esteem. So making sure you're doing things that make you feel good, that make you feel proud. Um, surrounding yourself with people who love you and care about you and who tell you, you know, it's okay even if you don't get this or even if you fail at it, um, you're still going to be okay. You're still worthy. You're still um, worth all of these things and that we can find um, a way to uh, make it work. And so um, making sure, you know, with self-care that you're doing something every single day that makes you happy, um, every something every single day that makes you feel loved, um, surrounding yourself again, like I said, with people who make you feel that way, uh, all of those sort of things. Um, you know, talking to your therapist, talking to your friends about what would happen or what will, what will I do, um, having systems in place when you either um, succeed or fail at the thing that you are um, trying to get. And uh, I will say when I use the word fail, I don't actually believe in necessarily failing. I think it's a, um, a place for growth, which actually leads to my fifth point, which is uh, not getting something that you've worked really, really hard for does not mean failure. Um, it means that it was not the right time. It was not supposed to happen that way. And every time we fail, every time we don't do well, every time we are pushed and tried and uncomfortable, um, that is a recipe for success later on. So um, something I often tell myself, and I know it's a very optimistic thing, um, I, can, I can find myself even in the moment. So when I failed, when I have gotten a bad test score, when I haven't gotten a job, I might cry, I might be really upset, but in that same breath I tell myself, but I know this will be just a small part of my story and later on I will be thankful for this failure. I will be thankful that I didn't get the job. Um, because it led me to something better. And it's really hard in the moments to do that, but, um, and a lot of the time your brain doesn't believe it, but I really would encourage you to have that sort of narrative. Um, because if you think about every single person, successful person, um, you'll hear them talk, they, they had to fail at some point. Um, we all fail, we all, we all fail a test, we all don't get a job, we all um, know someone who's been sick or lost someone or something like that. Like we, we all have been there. And 
um, that's where we grow. We don't grow in the comfort zone. We grow outside of the comfort zone. And I know that sounds really cliche and it's really easy to say um, when we're not in the moment, but to really be intentional and mindful of um, the fact that that is true. And so, um, you know, if you rule out all the things that could possibly go wrong and figure out how and what backup plans you have um, and you work on patience and mindfulness and self-care and self-love and staying in the moment um, and you work on um, the concept that if we struggle now uh, we will succeed later I think that all of those combined can really help when we are let down, when we don't get what we want, when things don't go how we should. Um, and I encourage you to take a day or two if that happens and be upset and be sad and, and be frustrated and angry and then get up and start working and moving and motivated to kick butt and do the next thing that you really need to do um, because that's just how it needs to go. And um, that's what's worked for me and it keeps me in a much better headspace than when I allow myself to sulk and feel like I'm not good enough or not worthy or um, stupid or anything like that. So um, I hope that helps. That's just some ideas as we head into the new year and have new opportunities and possibilities to come. Um, and uh, keep kicking butt and I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you.